Hello, this is Mr. Shelton with Florida Virtual School, AP Computer Science A. Welcome. This video will be on how to access the first big exam and give you some tips for taking the exam and getting through successfully. So if you, the things that you've taken up until now in modules 2 and 3 have been more like quizzes, very short and to the point. This is your first bear that you, uh, metaphorically speaking, that you get to wrestle with. It comes in two parts, a multiple choice and a written exam. Okay, So, I am I have this screen here, I'm as a student, Okay, so this should all look familiar to you. You first make sure, those of you who are make, taking multiple classes, make sure you're in my class right now. You should see a V14 or a V9 for the newer students you will see V14 and for the students who started in version 9 last fall you should see a V9 for version 9 okay so nothing wrong there okay so I'm going to enter through the grade book I'm going to scroll down to my first exam and this is no place to fiddle around because if you open this by mistake you have to take it okay and there are no resets except for uh, of course the most dire of emergencies so I have part one open already because I was I, I was practicing before I hit the record button I'm gonna start with point part two and come back over to part one I'm hoping part two prompts me for a password so you get to see you get to see that in action. So here is part two. It warns you that you're about to take a time exam. It tells you how long you have. Gives you far more time for the written than it does for the multiple choice. Okay, So we're going to enter the exam. Once you enter the exam, once you press this button, that's your point of uh, no return. Okay, so it didn't prompt me for a password because, I, like I said, I've, I've already been fiddling around. But you would have been pro prompted to put in the exact, the exact, the exam password, and by now you you guys are used to that, so that's not that's no big deal. All right, part two is the written. Okay, I'm going to just give you a glimpse of one of the questions. Uh, the chances of you having the same question is small. We have a great big database of questions that are, and you will take a shuffle version of those questions. So, so, okay, so don't just like knock yourself out over this question and spend days on it and then you take the test and you realize that it's not on the test, okay? Okay, so question one gives you a scenario a little bit you know, quite a bit of scenario there right and then it gives you a a text box to type into and that's where you're going to place your code okay so I just want to give you a few tips okay for this written portion and just only take a couple minutes okay this is um, you this the questions are worded in a way where we can, we build a rubric so it's going to, the question is going to ask for something very specific and with the longer questions like the one that you've seen there's going to be about maybe two to three places for you to get points and we're going to list of all we're going to let you know and tell you what all needs to be in the code that you write okay we're looking for things that are specific okay and there will be times where uh, a question, a, an item will, will ask you to write the entire code and there are times when the item will ask you to write a section of code. So read very carefully. I oftentimes I, I have kids who get some point deductions because they've, they've uh, it, it asks to write the whole code and they wrote a segment of code. Okay. So I don't want that to happen to you. So as long as you're reading carefully and you give what it's asked for, you have very good chance of making a high score. Okay. All right. So the written part 
the written portion contain four okay four items for the written part you need a long time to do it so take your time and score high okay let's jump over to part one of the exam okay part one of the exam is multiple choice and let's see how many multiple choice questions there are okay you're looking at 26 questions okay for the multiple choice side and like the other side we have a big database of these and so we shuffle them we shuffle them up you know you're taking 26 questions we have guess what we have written about 250 questions that I know of so you know where you have about you have a small chance of taking the same test twice but anyway you can do those odds on your own these questions are analytical in nature okay and I would you need to have your process elimination tool in your toolbox when you're taking this exam because you will you know undoubtedly run across a question or two that will be tough okay and being able to eliminate two of the distractors we call them distractors two of the choices right puts you at a, about a 50 50 chance okay on the other two all right if there are four choices total so make sure you have that tool with you okay that's the tool you need to strengthen all test takers but you're looking at an analytical analytical situation sometimes we'll give you code and actually to analyze it uh, you know other times we'll ask you if something is correct all right and what's incorrect you know all kinds of little multiple choice questions now you have two pieces of the curriculum you have the Florida virtual curriculum where you're writing code right and submitting to me and we send you over to EIMAX sometimes right and you do labs there and there's a lot of information over there well the multiple choice portion of this exam a large part of that is written out of the EIMAX materials so it's almost like you know one portion of the curriculum serves the code writing and the other portion serves a lot of the scenarios and multiple choice type stuff okay and EIMAX has been so tested all the way around the world right right by how many thousands of students the curriculum is solid so we feel very comfortable writing questions based on the information that is in EIMAX okay if your proctor allows you <clears throat> if you're taking this through a high school uh, you have to go about through local rules okay at your high school I do not mind you having one resource up while you take the multiple choice part of the exam the EIMAX I don't mind you having that up while you do that okay because you won't find any literal answers in there anyway you know you this stuff is application we're going to give you a, a scenario and you know actually you to apply the concept so if there is something that you need to, to look up quickly okay I don't have a problem with that because these questions are many of them very high level written and you're going to have to take that a concept and apply it okay and that's what, and you're gonna to have to analyze okay so that's basically the type of test you're taking process of elimination okay uh, use you know make the, the correct answer or the best answer one last thing for those of you taking the test through your high school I said local rules apply if the proctor there uh, may have other students in there or whatever the case may be if that local proctor says no resources while you're taking the exam then no resources we make that kind of agreement with the schools where they ha can have local con control because you may have a proctor in there who may know nothing about your course so they don't know if you're in EI Max or they don't know where you are okay so that's just you know that's just how it goes but if you uh, look over all of the material you know, if you've done the preceding work you should you shouldn't have a problem okay so I hope that helps you and takes a lot of the uh, anxiety away from taking your first big exam